my name is Shafali Roy, and I'm the CEO and Chief Compliance Officer at Trulea. Uh, some of you may know Trulea. We are a, a technology company that's API based, that we build products that allow applications to transfer and get the data of their end users with end user consent. Uh, and we also have a payments product, which is API based, that allows an application to initiate a payment on an end user's account with their consent. Um, I also sit on the FCA HMT's working group on open finance. So I'm really thrilled to be a part of this. And I'm really thrilled that we're having this conversation because I think like the other panelists very much concur that open finance is really the future. And, and I think as, a, as an industry, uh, we, mean, we must do as much as we can to make it happen. Um, I think the, the starting point was really looking at potential, seeing what was really available a year and a half on from open banking. And open banking, as you all know, uh, was really here to empower customers to be able to benefit third party services, give them better competitive prices, competitive products, but also be able to say, look, actually, my data is mine and I'm allowed to share with it to whoever I want. Um, that then follows globally where you think about Australia opening up a, a landscape of thinking about open, open finance um, and open data, more like. And, and as, as again, as the community and as you all may know, uh, Australia is looking at it in a, in a really, really broad way, not just first looking at banks, but then looking at financial institutions of very many different types. And then looking at different verticals, things like um, energy, telcos um, and utilities. So then you're looking at this massive open data ecosystem as opposed to just a finance one. Um, and I think there's topics later on to talk about reciprocity and all those nuances that they're implementing. So for us in the UK, and I think this was a really enormous task by the SC and certainly something that we should be very proud of, thinking about, well, if open banking is going to do so well, and you quoted some stats at the beginning of, of the explosion, really the last couple of weeks and months maybe, of how uh, OB has really taken off here. We then have to look and think, well, what else can we do to benefit the consumer and offer a British um, citizen as much as we possibly can to give them better uh, services and products? And so that means you can't just have payment accounts. That means you have to have other things. And that includes pensions, mortgages, loans, um, various types of credit cards, different, not just a CMA9, but a whole suite and swath of, of financial uh, products and financial data that then you're able to say, okay, what's the, what's the data value here? And therefore, <clears throat> how is the consumer going to benefit? So we started there, um, and from that came a multiple, a multiple uh, series of things, like how do we look at consent and consent management? How do we look at what's a sustainable model across Europe, and I mean, starting with the UK, but across uh, the UK financial landscape and saying, how does this actually work consistently? Um, you then think about payment initiation. I think Sam was saying this earlier in our prep call. Um, how does payment initiation become this really fantastic alternative to credit cards or other alternative methods of payment. It's cheaper, it's faster, it's more secure, it's done in bank of even rails. Why wouldn't we do it? I would certainly do it as a consumer. I love, love the fact that I have that option. Um, improving functionality and improving APIs. Let's use technology, we're such fans of it, let's use it well. Um, and so we truly are an API based platform. They're very proud of it and very deliberate about using that technology because Again, and this is part of the working groups initiative, how does that work and how does open uh, finance work with GDPR? How is it compliant with that? How do they work and what's that marriage look like? Um, and also thinking about security. This whole thing will not work if the consumer and the end user says, thanks so much for asking me for my consent, but I'm not going to give it to you. So how do we build trust and how do we empower the user and the end user to understand what's open banking? How is it going to for me and how's it going to be helpful for my financial well-being and that's a really fundamental um, fundamental uh, uh, category to think about um, and then also thinking just about the broader platform exactly like not just payments but then other financial and financial products so the working group really started with thinking about how do we make consumers lives better how do we make sure that they're included how do we make sure they're not getting cheated and they're taken for a rort? Um, and how do we empower them so that they build trust in the financial system? And today, I mean, I think given this, the COVID virus fiasco and 
markets tanking. There's uncertainty. People are scared. People are nervous. And so this is one way to think about building that trust in a financial model and a financial system. So having those people in that working group was really fantastic because it brought the market together. It wasn't just a regulator going, okay, I'm going to draft this and send it out. We literally formed this really lovely working group to say, let's have everybody's buy-in, everybody's concerns, and everybody's um, uh, conversations so that it's a really robust piece of consultation work that everybody can have an opinion on. The, the, the reason it has it's taken such a long time, it's, I think banks have thought of it as a, it being their proprietary information. Um, but at, at the end of the day, my, my data that I hold with my bank is actually mine. And so sh I should be allowed to do with it what I would like. Um, and I think what, what perhaps, if you look at the counter argument, the reason it's just taken perhaps a little longer than it should have is because of questions on security and authorization and use and monetization. Um, and in this world where data is um, monetized for, shall we say, nefarious reasons, then we really need to think about how that's been used and how transparent we are about that data and what it's being used for. So I, as an end user, might consent to an application having my data, fantastic. What's the application doing with my data? What are they doing with it? If they store it, if they hold it, if they monetize it. And so all of those clarity, clarity around that has to happen. But I think, I and mean, I completely agree with Sam, I think it's my data and I should be allowed to, to share it with whoever I want in terms of if, if, if I understand what they're going to do with it. Uh, because I do want, as a consumer, better products and services and a plethora of options of, of how to use my money and save my money.